Um, so um, Brad is, is actually a wonderful partner for Visita. Uh, not only he came all the way around the world, literally, to be with us today, uh, he also endured all of our socks jokes throughout the week and uh, he knows how to spell our name correctly on the slide. So as soon as I saw that, I figured I'm just going to, uh, well, pretty much my work here is done. <laughs> so I'm going to let him uh, present uh, our use case and I'm just going to pop back to the end to talk a little bit about um, what we see on our direct channel. But other than that, I'll just hang about back <laughs> there. How did you get the easy job in this? I, we, we did sing. <laughs> um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My definition is on air mode. Not just yet. Does that sound okay? Yes. Excellent. Uh, my first Cinder conference. It's been really great so far, and I wanted to thank you all for your transparency and honesty with the information that you share. I really find that together that makes us stronger. Um, and in the same spirit, I'm going to share in a very transparent and honest way with you today as well. Um, as Dee mentioned, I'm from uh, the company is Census, but it's the publisher of the Yellow Pages in Australia. It's also the publisher of the White Pages, um, and it has another big directory business called True Local as well. But I'm just going to focus on the Yellow Pages businesses, uh, business today and talk specifically about our um, attempt to increase the engagement that we have with our customers, because it's a challenge I'm sure that you're all familiar with as well. So what is engagement and why do we need engaged customers? I mean, come on, we're the Yellow Pages and Australia's not that big. We're the biggest player there is there. Um, don't we just rock up each year and collect our renewal check and get our, our order for the next year? Um, what's all this stuff about engagement? That sounds hard. And uh, there's a theme here because I noticed that Yellow Pages South Africa used a similar slide as well. We had our, hand, our head in the sand a little bit here and we weren't really paying attention to the fact that uh, there's plenty of other platforms around in the world that are engaging their customers. And time, as we've heard many times through this conference, is a finite resource for our customers and, and for businesses and SMBs. And if other platforms are engaging their attention and their heart and their mind, we're not over time. Now, there's plenty of other competitors and, and platforms I could have put on here. I just chose a fairly universal international flavour, but there's um, lots in the Australian space that are uh, specific to us as well. But we are trying to engage people. We, we have given it our best effort over the years, but probably more in a traditional sense. So things like brand marketing, digital advertising, TV advertising, other um, interactive events and local uh, education pieces, they're all been an attempt of ours to really stay as close to the customer as we can. And it has its place and, and it does work to a degree. Um, but we need to go more on that day-to-day -day basis. You can't keep this activity up every day, all day, 24-7, um, people don't, businesses don't just work nine to five, they're doing odd hours at night and on the, on the weekends. So we needed something that could still engage customers when we weren't there. Um, and because it's obvious, increasingly their attention is being pulled elsewhere. And as I've mentioned, if, it's, if their attention is elsewhere, it's not with us. So we brainstormed and we, we went out to market and we thought about a few things. And, and like another, a, a number of other properties around, you know, we stumbled on the idea of Scheduling, bookings, it makes perfect sense. We want to be able to move to a transaction-based economy. Our, um, our consumers as, who are using the Yellow Pages in Australia are certainly trying to do it. I know I book most of my services online, whether it's uh, the dentist or the dog groomer. Um, it's, it's very natural for me. So clearly businesses would just you know, eat this up all day long and it would be a very easy decision for them to make. We went through a very exhaustive process of trying to look at different vendors and suppliers around the world. Um, pleasingly, Vesita. Uh, That's awesome for us. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to say that. <laughs> um, and Vesita um, did very well and, and had a, an, awesome, uh, an awesome offering for us at that point in time. And you know, we had this big lofty goal of being the number one destination in Australia for consumers to find and book services. We probably still have that, but um, this is how we went about doing it. So we added a bookings button or a scheduling button to our existing directory. So this is just an example of our search results page uh, with some uh, listings uh, there and the, and the screen behind is what it was before and then we just popped a button on. There you go, problem fixed, engagement solved. That's how, that's how it works, isn't it? Um, so this is what we thought would happen. <coughs> engagement, um, just up and to the right and, and that's the kind of graph that we want to see. <sighs> 
Um, not quite. It had some effect, but uh, the engagement reality was is that it was sort of a half-inflated uh, solution for us. Nothing wrong with the booking solution. It worked very well. Uh, our ability to engage the customers of ours was, was what was missing there. And there's a couple of reasons that stick out for us now as why that might have been the case. Um, you know, some businesses already have their own booking solution, so why would they want one from us? It's very difficult, as you know, to move people from one platform to another. Uh, we could only speak to customers that are actually looking for a booking solution. Uh, otherwise, you know, they're not really somebody that we need to talk to. And this one is probably most striking and, and most painful of all. You know, we're the Yellow Pages. People think something of us in a certain way. They think that we do a certain thing already. It's marketing services, it's advertising, it's listings. But surely it's not bookings and transactions and, and, uh, and solutions like that. And we, we hit a bit of uh, difficulty getting some traction with this. So it was never really just about the booking button. Um, that's what I'm here to share with you today. So again, in the interest of transparency and honesty, I don't think we got this quite right. Great partner, wrong uh, strategic direction for us as a, as a business. So if it's not a booking request button, then what is it? Um, and this is where we're at today. We think that we need to shift how we sell um, to our customers. And we're no longer selling the listing, we're selling outcomes for our customers. And if we want to engage them, we've got to change how we engage with them. So we went about uh, making sure that we connected in a very authentic way with our customers, sat down with them in their trucks and their businesses and their cafes and, and did exhaustive research face-to-face -face and, and a number of different other methodologies. And we feel like we better understood their needs. And we also discovered some really interesting facts along the way as well. So for the number nerds in the uh, audience, this one's for you. 80% uh, of SMBs use business services to assist their administrative duties. And they do this to alleviate some sort of stress associated with running their business. So what we mean there is that um, they're using services to do things in their business other than just get leads. Um, they're doing things like trying to run their business, their payroll, their uh, accounting, what, uh, their workforce scheduling, whatever the case may be. Um, 81 days, the average SMB in Australia spends on uh, non-core activities. So things that are not actually related to the key skill or business activity that they have. And uh, this number looks a bit higher than what I saw in one of the other presentations. So I'm not sure if it's a quirk in the Australian market or just a different representation in the sample, but 82% of our micro businesses, so that's a really small, one to four operators in the market, uh, in the business, they use smartphone to operate their business. 82%. So we think that these numbers are actually the missed opportunity. And just to dive into that a little bit more, of the average week, and this is a little bit hard to see some of the smaller numbers, but I'll just call out the big ones. Um, in the average week, the average SMB uh, is only spending about 17 and a half hours on their core business activity. The rest of it is all the stuff around the edges. The marketing, the accounting, the customer service. There's a big other thing there. We obviously got lazy and didn't break that down at that point. Um, and, and there's a number of other ones that um, I'm sure will be shared in the pack. You can have a look at in detail later. So being in business as an SMB is a lot about doing other things than your core activity. So I talked about we wanted to change how we go to market, we wanted to change how we sell to our customers, we wanted to change how we engage with them. We think this is a change. We need to shift our focus. We're not pushing products anymore to our customers uh, and only addressing some of their needs. What we need to be doing, and what we are doing, is uh, proving value and delivering the outcomes through an end-to-end -end solution for the, um, for the customer through a service-based offering. And this is my favourite slide of the whole lot. It's pretty simple. Um, I'm a simple man, so it doesn't take much to impress me. But um, there is a, uh, there's a thought process behind this which really puts products at the end of our thinking. Um, and that's, that's a big one for a product guy to say because you know, I've always been about building stuff and, and putting products first. But actually, we're finding increasingly for our Australian market and for the uh, challenge of engaging our customers is that we need to be putting service first experience first. Service and experience are the things that define and deliver the value, and the product's just there to capture the value. That's the last part of the equation. So here we are, uh, we need a new entry point into Yellow Pages and a new way to engage with our customers. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit what that is in the last few slides, 
Uh, this is where we were, so thinking back to us pushing products, we have a listing business, um, we generate leads, uh, we send those to our customers, whether it's via email, SMS, phone call, all the sort of traditional way. So that makes sense to everyone here, I'm sure. When we first engaged with Cedar and we looked at the booking solution and we rolled that out with the green button on our listings, this is where we sort of ended up. So we still had our leads model there and then we had bookings as another type of transaction which went into a platform which we call Pocket Office, which is the white label version of the Cedar. Um, Adi really Our likes favorite. the name. Yeah. yeah, makes me smile every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so this is where we got to in that first iteration. Um, and this is, that, that was kind of the half, deflate, half inflated balloon at this point. This is the bit that, you know, we got some success, we got some traction, but not the scale that we want. We're all in the business of scale and, and we want to operate at a, at a, a big level and, and this wasn't quite getting us there. So we're moving to, and this is a work in progress, so I'm sharing something that's on the fly, but we have had some early success with a, a smaller cohort of users. This is where we're going. So really, all the leads and all the activities and all the interactions with the customer is going to be delivered through our pocket office solution in partnership with Vaseda. And that will be the dashboard. We've heard a couple of times, and especially this morning, that small businesses just want a simple solution where all the complexity is below the surface <laughs> and there's a nice dashboard for them to run their business. That's what we're offering through Pocket Office. And in Pocket Office is where you experience the world of yellow and all the products and the features and the things that we have. So of course our leads are in there. We're not giving up on that business. That's very profitable and very uh, important to us. Bookings will still be in there as well, but there's other features like receiving payments and doing billing and invoicing. Uh, running campaigns and having a customer uh, data set, uh, our customer's customer that is, so a CRM functionality. And anything else we conceive in the future is going into this dashboard. And this is the experience that all new advertisers, all new customers, excuse me, with yellow pages, will interact with. So I think he wasn't wrong, or I'm going to let myself off the hook with that and say it wasn't. I think he wasn't necessarily wrong. But adding a booking button was never going to be enough. We were just not thinking big enough. And I think if I'd encourage anyone to walk away from these sessions is to, to think about this as a whole uh, solution rather than uh, trying to just solve individual pain points. And, and I, I think that's certainly true for us and, and potentially also true for you. But I'd encourage you to also validate and check that. Now, just believe everything I say on face value. Uh, so why do we want businesses to engage with us? The whole point of this conversation is to talk about why engagement is important. It's probably pretty obvious to <laughs> you. Um, um, businesses want to engage with us because uh, it's a better way to manage their leads, which we're already doing, but it's a better way to manage their business. And it's a better way for them to manage their customers. Now, we're doing something a little bit um, interesting, I think, at Yellow. We've tried some verticalisation strategies in the past um, and had some success again. But actually, we feel like a horizontal play is better for us. We're a broad-based offering in the market, uh, one of the largest, particularly if you take into account our other directories, White Pages and True Local. I think 60 or 70% of the Australian market, uh, audience interacts with one of our properties. Um, so we take a horizontal view, but we pick the bit that's consistent through multiple verticals. So whether that's payments or bookings or leads, but applies to a number of different verticals. And why do we partner? I mean, we've heard this a few times today as well, because we've got, we're challenged by time. <laughs> Time's not on our side. Uh, we're a business that needs to transform. We are doing that, but we always need to go faster. And of course, partnerships give us the opportunity to leverage the breadth of that partnership and scale faster and get to market more quickly. Um, we do build some things ourselves still. We, we, we find the right balance there as much as we can. And after 40 plus years in the Australian market, we're no longer, we think we're no longer just delivering a listing, we're delivering this holistic offering that works across all sorts of verticals and delivers this end-to-end -end service through our CRM, our engagement platform at Posita. So why is it important to win the engagement space? Engage customers, stay longer, spend more, become advocates, and there's a whole other list beyond that as well. Um, but it's a very important uh, uh, strategy for us and one that, as I said, is in flight, but we're starting to see some early success with that as well. So just to wrap up, and I want to hand back to Adi, um, at Yellow, we, this is how we see ourselves, and this is the sort of internal mantra that we use. It's a fairly classical um, marketing archetype uh, as being a champion, and the literal meaning of that is to sort of go into battle on behalf of somebody. And so we feel like we go into battle with the complexity of running your business and the non-core activities through the Yellow um, offering for our SMBs. 
that's all I had. I'll hand back <laughs> over to Adi, and I'm certainly yeah. happy to take questions as well. Yeah, so, um, oh, I'm going to stand up, come on. <laughs> Don't be lazy. All right. <laughs> you can sit. Uh, you've done your bit. All right, rest. <laughs> so, I think, uh, well, we basically pretty much talked to everyone here on the last, uh, not a, a year and a half or so, that we are in this space. Uh, so probably it's not a big secret that we as a company live a double life. Uh, on uh, our day job we are a, a product first company, a tech first company I think Charles called it. On our uh, international job we're flying out to meet guys like you and try to convince you to also do these kind of things. Um, so. For just right now, just to give a little bit of context to what Brad was saying, I want to talk a little bit about what we see uh, as a tech-first company. And we're a startup. We are, you said you're 40 years old. <laughs> we are eight years old. Uh, and probably all of you have uh, quite a lot of uh, salespeople, quite a lot of, we have six. So we're really growing that space right now. Um, and we always needed to keep our channels lean and we needed to keep our customers and we've got globally 15,000 new clients coming in monthly uh, so over a million registered user total and we need to keep them engaged because at the end of the day small businesses or more so micro businesses which is where we live are consumers and this needs to be a consumer, a, a B2C channel, uh, channel. And I don't think when Brad put Instagram and YouTube and Facebook on his list of competitors, that's not, you know, that, 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 that's not over the top. This is, these are the people that we see as our competitors. And they are competing, as people said here before, competing for people's time, competing for people's attention. If you're Facebook and Google, you're also competing on their business management. And I think in that respect, we have to treat them as consumers, which means create experiences, uh, preferably mobile experiences. We need to be interesting for them. We cannot rely on the fact that we have uh, support people and salespeople that will assist them along. We need to think about it as a digital channel. And I think um, together with the insights that we're getting right now from our direct channel, for example, we are transforming into a place where, you know, mobile is the key for this. Because sometimes, definitely with a CRM, you come in and you say, this is a CRM, it has a calendar, it has an inbox, you've got contact management and campaigns. It all sounds very, very complicated, very, very not experience like but when you take the same experience you put it on mobile yes you will have the challenge of a smaller screen and uh, you know very big buttons but suddenly uh, engaging through messaging engaging through uh, an inbox and a calendar and a client list oh, we're all used to that that doesn't sound so weird when we're talking about, when we're moving this whole challenge into the mobile world so uh, for us, that's the next big thing. Happy to talk about this with anyone that wants to listen. And also, I tend to talk about it with people who don't want to listen as well. <laughs> uh, obviously, we're going to be here for the rest of the week. And we're going to take questions. Let's do questions. Yeah, I'm going to sit next to you. Any questions? Yeah, am I on? Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Everyone's ready for yeah, lunch. Yeah, everyone's ready for lunch. <laughs> I, I just have one quick, if you, if you allow me. Uh, I think this is very interesting what you're saying about the fact that you need to view the micro businesses as consumers because this is a trend that we're seeing and we just saw in Africa, mm -hmm. we, just, we saw the figures also in Europe with the, with the tech survey and landscape survey about the portion of uh, micro and very, very small yeah. or micro businesses who are uh, a very important portion. Uh, my question is, in, in, that, in that sense, uh, are there any issues with the data usage uh, possibilities and the kind of, uh, well, you know, my background is regulation, so mm -hmm. we see all the stricter uh, regulation coming in with GDPR and so on. I is the fact to consider 
businesses as consumers, is, does that have an impact on the data usage possibilities that you're having? Because obviously you want to integrate all the data and then split by usage possibilities. Yeah. So, so obviously uh, we have a lot of data. <laughs> And we are, uh, as all of us are, uh, limited by regulation and of course we are completely law-abiding and therefore uh, we are not necessarily, well, we're not necessarily making use of all of that data. But I think where the opportunity of you know, cus our customers being also consumers comes in is, um, for example, in virality. So, uh, in our case, 17% uh, of our traffic is viral because if I am a hairdresser, I still need a plumber and I will still be getting the plumber through the same ways that I would. And if I saw at that point a, a Visita widget somewhere or a pocket office uh, booking button, and I, I would mm, want to be on that as well. And we're now doing... Uh, uh, we, we're launching with Google Reserve. Google guys spoke uh, yesterday about the Reserve tool. So, for example, if I can get my my, my services, my, my 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 information on Google, other consumers, that hairdresser, the plumber, the dog walker, they're all people that are also searching. So, I think that element is a far <coughs> greater opportunity than it is a risk. However, it is. It, it hasn't been cracked yet. It's still our CMO will say if it was here. It hasn't been cracked yet in the sense that they're very small, very quick on their feet, you know, very um, attention uh, driven. So we're definitely competing in a difficult market, but that's what we're here for. If it was easy, anyone would do it. <laughs> no, I'm time, but just to, off the back of that to add quickly to it. Um, I think the thinking of businesses as a consumer is really a mindset change as well. And so it's, it's probably old thinking to think that a, a business owner or somebody in a business would behave that differently to a consumer. Um, and if you can piggyback off the back of existing behaviours, you've got a much better chance of transitioning people into a new behaviour or a new action. And ch changing behaviour is really hard. So if you can piggyback something else, that, that's got to make it easier. Yeah, and I think if you go back to the experience focus, you, you, if you're a very small business owner or a micro business owner, what you want to have is experience and you're not thinking of yourself about I'm different when I'm uh, shopping in the street or uh, running my business from my, uh, from my uh, small office at very home. Right. Or so. so you need to capture the attention when the experience and offer them the, the best experience no matter when, in which role, let's say, they are acting. So, yeah. Okay. That's the part that we're still building out at the moment. So we're, we're redesigning our service experience and the way that you interact with us. So that the service initially is the service layer about that experience with the customer. Yeah. But then beyond that, we really see some of the things that we're doing already and we'll do in the future as also services. So leads, we think, is a service. Like the service yeah. that you're providing there is to grow your revenue or uh, bring on new staff. Um, running a CRM for the business um, the service there is to reduce the administration of that. So it's about reconceiving the products as services first. And then the way we think of a product, and this is what I meant by capturing the value, it's really just there to be the physical articulation of that service that you delivered. Yep. So this is how many leads we got. This is the performance of that. Um, this is what I log into. It's just the physical representation of it. Gotcha. it, it it's sort of semantic, but it's, a, it's, a, um, it's an interesting way to reinvigorate the internal machinations of the business and how we think about what we try to do. If you think about yourself as a service provider first, um, you make a, a set of different decisions that, that you would do normally as if you try to integrate an API in a product and push it out. Right. And we've done all the bundling and the API stuff and it got us to where we needed to be, but it's not our next step. Gotcha. Hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, no, that's great. Any other questions? Yes. So you sort of articulated an uh, like a small business operating system like system that you're moving towards. How long do you think until you reach that full stack that you, that you put in that slide? Second part of it is how does this selling that change your sales organization? How does your sales organization have to change to sell that? 
Yeah, very, very good questions. Um, as I said, this is in flight, so some of it we're still working out. Um, my honest answer is I don't think we're ever finished, um, but the reality, and, and to kind of give you something useful to answer the question, I, we've already got a small set of people that are interacting with parts of our existing services and products in this way, and we're really just rolling that out and refining it. So, you know, within the next six to 12 months, I think that we can do the remainder of the transformation that the organisation needs to do to be able to operate in this model. And then that leads into your second point about the sales organisation. So, you know, we've still got a, a very large uh, field sales and telesales representation in our company. It's a very important part of, very important channel, and um, we want to continue to support them with the products that we have. But we're also looking to the new opportunities. And one of the biggest competitors that we see for ourselves is more of an, um, an agency type model. So. In, in local businesses, uh, in local areas, a single operator is opening up shop and offering many of the services that we have traditionally been offering and have made really good connections with that local community. So we're trialling um, a way to be able to replicate that kind of experience, an agency sort of model um, in, in the field and to be able to deliver these new sort of products through that as well. Will Census ever have a reseller network? Or do you? Or, you know? I don't know if you do that. Um, we don't currently. We have in the past. Um, it's we're open to all <laughs> opportunities. Um, we've got a lot on our plate at works. the moment. Whatever works. Whatever works. <laughs> but um, we also have to remain pretty focused, and we're finding that the best way to uh, finish our transformation is to keep reasonably internal at the moment. Um, we've been through a lot of changes, uh, and, and we've still got some more to go. But yeah, I, I think it's probably not immediately on our cards. Thank you. Uh, pleasure. Okay, any other one? Well, if not, thank you very much. So, uh, we just want to thank everyone, and uh, we're going to break for lunch now. Yeah, oh no, no, hold on a sec. Kim, Kim has the results. Sorry. <laughs>